and we'll take it from there. Okay. Hi guys, it's Evelyn from Magellan College Counseling. Um, I'm here today with Professor Rob Gould from UCLA. He's a statistics professor. Um, by the way, he's super smart. He got his undergraduate degree at Harvey Mudd and his PhD at UC San Diego. And he has taught at UCLA for, oh my gosh, over 25 years. Um, and he has a special interest in teaching statistics. And so I asked him to come join us today um, just to give a really quick explanation. Um, and I'm going to share my screen of, um, of what it really means when you come to us with a list that looks like this, and you think that you have a cumulative chance of, of the sum of all of your REACH schools added up together. And um, Professor Gould is gonna give us a, a really quick explanation about why that's not the case, so. Yeah, so I, I think, you know, let's start with why, what the right way of finding out is and what the probability I think everyone wants to know is what's the probability I'm going to get into at least one of these schools yep. and so uh, it's usually easier to think about questions like that to think of what's the probability that I get rejected by all of them so take Dartmouth if there's an eight percent chance of getting in there's a 92 percent chance of getting rejected and then with Columbia there's a a, a 95 percent chance of getting rejected so the probability of getting rejected by both, you multiply those rejection probabilities. Mm -hmm. So it's going to be 92% times 95%. And if we continue down the list there, times 95% for, per for Princeton and times 88% for USC and so on until we get to Emory. And if you I multiply, yeah. I just did a quick, uh, I don't think, because I don't, I don't think you can see my calculator, but I just pulled up a calculator. And so I just did the Dartmouth times Columbia. So you have an 87% chance of not getting into either if you apply to both. Yeah. But what that means is you, that does look like you have a 13% chance of getting in, which does happen to be the sum of the two of those. Is that an accident? Yeah, that's an accident. Okay. That's just a mathematical, but if we keep going and we multiply it times 0.95% um, chance of uh, getting rejected from Princeton, now all of a sudden we have an 83% chance of not getting into any of them. Yes. Which is smaller than the sum. So it seems like the more you add, um, how does, how is this working? The more we multiply. Yeah, well, so, so um, you know, the, the, the more schools you apply to, the better your probability is of getting into at least one. Um, and the lower your probability of getting rejected by all of them. But, uh, it, but it's definitely not cumulative because now it's I'm- It's not cumulative in by, by adding them up. So if, if we were to multiply all the rejection probabilities in the REACH school list there, um, I, I think we get what a, 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 about a 51% chance of being right. rejected by all of them. Right. Yeah. So there's a 49% chance of getting into at least one. Right. That's quite a bit less than just adding them up and getting 62%. Right. right. And the other thing to think about, and this is the part that people don't realize, is this is just the mathematical side, but there's also a, a human factor side, right? So, for example, what I didn't tell you when I showed you this list was that all of these schools have engineering programs and each of their engineering programs is even more selective with an even lower acceptance rate. So if you happen to be an engineer, these aren't really your numbers to begin with. Right, right. But, but people, people see um, this process as like throwing darts at a dartboard. So yeah. tell us why it's, I'm gonna stop sharing now, we've kind of got the numbers, but tell us kind of why it's not actually like that. Well, it's, it's like that to like a very crude approximation, but when you look at a number that says, since I'm at UCLA, let's take UCLA, that the probability of getting in is 14%, that's calculated across everyone who applied. Right. And you're not like everyone who applied. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, you're, you're different. I mean, if you have perfect SAT scores, uh, your probability is going to be different. And if you had, you know, you were the, uh, a, a, a famous concert pianist already or, or had uh, sold your first uh, <clears throat> tech company, <laughs> you know, you, you'd be uh, <laughs> in a different group than, than everyone else. So, right. uh, and, and, and I think, you know, it's really hard to pinpoint different segments and say what their probability of getting in or isn't in because those probabilities probably change from year to year depending exactly. on 
supply exactly. and demand and other factors like that. Exactly. And, and if you um, overcame a major obstacle in your life and did a really good job of writing an essay about it and helped the admission officers who read your file see you as a real human being, you also might have a better chance of getting in. And that's the human factor that the numbers just can't capture. Right. And there's also, as a statistician, we're always aware of a kind of a bias selection event so or yes. factor. So, you know, a lot of people just don't apply to Harvard because they know that they're not wanting to go there or they believe that their grades aren't going to get them in, so they just don't apply. Right. If everyone applied to Harvard, uh, so UCLA, I think, was the mo most applied school uh, a year or so ago. Oh, no, and, you know, it, Yeah, if it had the same number of people applying to Harvard, Harvard might look much more hard to get into than it is now. Exactly. True. I mean, Harvard has about a third the number of applicants that UCLA has, but their class is also significantly smaller. Right. Um, all right. Well, this is helpful because I think um, people often, like I said, they come to us with these lists and they're a little bit reach heavy and they think you just add up all those numbers and that's my chance. And so it's kind of this throwing spaghetti at the wall method, which is um, it may work in darts, but in college admissions, not so much. Yeah. I mean, I, I think the thing is when you add things up and you get to 100 percent or more, you want to say, well, that must mean I'm definitely getting in. But you've got to realize there's always going to be a chance at that you're not. That's right. Uh, it may be very, very, very small, but but you, if you get to 100% of anything, that's usually a sign that something's gone wrong. In the you, you calculated. You didn't show your work. Yeah. All right. Well, everyone everyone needs a math lesson every now and then. So I I thank you for taking the time. My pleasure. Um, and it was nice to talk to you, Professor uh, Robert Gould from UCLA. Thank you so much.